good afternoon. Um, name is Reggie. I go by Country Boy. Um, and today, what I'm going to do while I'm doing a little editing is just going to give you a little uh, background into who I am and where I come from. Um, first off, like I said, I'm Reggie. Um, one of the duo of Reggie and Boone, um, you know, the Swamp Kings. We are, are starting our little thing. So, just so you know who I am and what I am and who I am. Um, I was born in Fort Pierce, Florida. Um, on a rainy Wednesday night, and I know it was a rainy Wednesday night, um, because every time I went to Florida, um, Michael Jim used to tell me the story of how I was almost born in the back of his car. So that was always fun to hear. Um, I miss those stories now, like, I wish my kids could hear them, you know, because, you know, those are things that you cherish and that you always remember. I will always remember those stories until the day I die. Um, so, yeah. I was born on a Wednesday in October in Southern Florida. Well, Southern Central Florida, I guess. Um, so, after that, we moved back to my mom's home, um, which is Mystic. Georgia. Yeah. It's that small. You blink, you done missed it. Um, but I love that little place. I remember my, I guess my first home per se that I can remember was my Uncle Brian's house. Um, it was a three bedroom house with a bathroom with I don't know if we had running water at the time I don't remember I don't believe we did and I I believe we did but I believe it was the like one of the first houses in my the neighborhood that wasn't a trailer that had running water so it was kind of new to the thing um, now mind you I was born in 80 so I'm still kind of you know right off of how do you say right at the edge of development of the country and it's still developing now. Um, I think other states may be a little bit behind where we are, but it is what it is. That's neither here nor there. Um, so the house was was white, and our room was the front room, right off of. The living room is where we always stayed, primarily. Um, the house was there until I was about six or seven, I want to say. Maybe even sooner than that. Um, 
but the house burnt down and the only thing I remember my mom like fretting over out of the house was like these train tracks to um these train tracks to this um this little train, this little plexiglass train she had bought me. She still has the train, I believe. I know she still had it last I saw it. She still had the train. And the tracks just melted away. And I always remember her telling me that she would like to see if she could find somewhere to get the tracks to that train. You know, Maybe now that I'm getting a little bit better in life, I can do that. You know, something I can do for my mom to show her that a lot of the things she did for me meant a lot. So, I love her more than anything else. And I always remember I'll I'll never forget um growing up in Mystic, Georgia. Like our house Again, sorry, I'm I'm back and forth, but our house was right across the street from my uncle's pig pen, and then across the street from Perm, him was Miss Charlene's house, my cousin, my cousin's grandma, and then behind the house was the little church that everybody went to in the neighborhood. So you had that and then it was always people in the house. Um, like I don't remember my grandmother. Um, I think she passed away before I was born, um, so, well, she didn't pass away before I was born, she passed away that December after I was born, or something of that effect, it was like somewhere in the, the year or two after I was born, she was gone, so I don't remember my mom's mom like that. Um, my dad lived um, around the corner. Um, I always remember being with him when I wasn't with my my mom and my mom's family and my dad's family. Right, it's a lot of people. Um, so even though they weren't together, they always had a a cordial we're doing this for Reggie attitude and it was always nice to be able to I would hear people talk about how their parents didn't get along and I just I never dealt with that I was blessed to have four parents that all I thought got along. They may not have, you know, under the surface, but I never saw it. Um, so, so I just. 
I remember, you know, just being loved always. Like, I don't, I don't remember the, I guess what you would say, the bad part of life, I guess. I was blessed to have four parents. So, I, so, okay, back to where I was, so I can kind of keep this story in line, because I'm going to go back to this, back and forth throughout the, the time that I'm doing this, so that I can kind of document and have my story for my kids, my grandkids, because you never know what may happen to me or what may happen in the long run or just in life in general. Um, so in the house, it used to be my Uncle Brian's house and I would always just be one of the kids in the yard. Like I, as a kid, the memories that I remember, I remember getting, I remember running a lot. I remember running through the woods a lot. I don't remember You know, I don't remember a lot of being yelled at a lot until I guess I got a little bit older and I was supposed to be more stationary. Now, when it came to church, I was always getting talked to or something of that nature because like, I always slept or I was always bored or I was always hyper or wanted to be into something. Um, My grandmother would say that me and my cousin we used to always be meddling with stuff, you know. Um, so our meddling has always led me to to just try and be better at stuff, to just try and make sure that. that people know well I know what's going on like so if you ever look at a map of mystic um I don't know if they would have one or an aerial view. They may have them from back when I was a kid where you could see the dirt road, the, the dirt basketball court, which is all overgrown now. I believe somebody actually has a trailer on it. Um, the big field we used to play softball in is all overgrown. Um, the dirt roads I used to run on are now all paved. So... It's, it looks different, but I still see Michael Bryant's pig pen, you know, Miss Charlene's house with her in it. Um, man, it's just, it's crazy how how life is and how I wish as a kid or even younger I would have had more videos or done this more to kind of get out what I've done or where I've been or what I was doing at the time. Um, 
So, that being said, in 82-ish, 83-ish, um, my mom got married to a guy from Osula, who the big city. Um, well, which is just in town, um, so we stayed in Mystic, and he was from Osceola. Um, so we moved to Osceola into this little yellow brick house, two bedroom, um, one bath, a little small little kitchen with a little nook, little living room. Um, it's actually where I learned how to ride a bicycle. Um... From there, we used to walk to take the circle, <clears throat> which was down the dirt road, and Miss Sally used to babysit me, um, with her two kids, her older kids, um, and while my mom would worked at the nursing home and then she eventually got a job at Campbell Soup but started out working at the nursing home um, in Osceola. Osceola which was which is ironic because it ended up being behind our house um, that they end up buying. So I was six well five going on six when my mom had my oldest sister um and i started kindergarten now the funny thing about kindergarten is i've never really i've never really gotten in trouble throughout school you know little things here and there mainly not doing homework but the thing that sticks out and will well two things that kind of will always stick out in my mind and one person will probably never remember it well well the people who were involved in it will never remember what happened um, however, the teacher, I've, I've told her um, how I felt about what happened because I told her that for me as a kid, I didn't understand. And even as I got older, I kind of still didn't understand. <clears throat> so the first thing that happened was I was, I guess, so my stepdad is a preacher. Um, so all I've heard is preaching, preaching, preaching. And I guess I tell this little girl that if she doesn't do something, she's going to go to hell. And I wasn't, I don't think in my head I was telling her to go to hell. Um, I think as a kid, I think I was kind of trying to preach to her about doing something. And... I got scolded for it. Um, it was the first time, like, I think I got scolded at school. And it kind of threw me off because I didn't understand exactly what I had did so wrong. Um, now, the second thing that happened to me in kindergarten, also on the playground, was... I was sitting on a tire with this little girl. We were talking, and like for some reason, I was always infatuated by her. I, I, yeah, I was. Um, as a kid, I thought that that would be my end all my beginning and my end um i had this fairy tale in my head of um 
me being with one woman for my whole life. Um, but of course, I messed that up. Um, so, with that being said, um, this little lady was sitting on the tire, and she proceeded to get up off of the tire. Well, this said tire was not bolted to the ground, so the said tire lifted up and knocked out my two front teeth. So, I was literally saying, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. I lost them on the playground at six. <laughs> so, that was, you know, that's a little crazy, but that's, that's awesome. That was me. Um, my... I guess my next introduction into life or just living life in general was we moved from there to I guess our forever home I guess you say now mind you the first home that we stayed in which you know, we have always talked about black people don't help out other blacks or parents, black parents don't look out for their kids. It's not always true. Um, they may look out for some and may not look out for others, which, again, is not always right. They may see some that may be a little weaker than others, but we lived in my grandfather's house. Um, for a little while. I don't know the rent situation. Never asked. Never cared. But none of my business. Um, but then we moved to Babylon. Um, and when we moved to Babylon, on our block, on the street that I was on, there were no other black people. Now, we did have one other black family that was right behind us. But when we first moved in that house, I don't remember any other black people being in that specific vicinity. Um, man, I don't can't remember the lady's name right now, but it was a lady who was a banker who stayed next door, her and her husband and her little boy. Um, and then to the right of me was these two white females um, that were around my age. I don't remember. Well, the one to the right of me was a rental house so like different people stayed in that house it was never just one family staying in that house now two doors to the left of me was also a very was like a, a older white couple um i think they spoke to me like once maybe twice my whole time i stayed in that house um and then I had um, Russell, who was a friend of mine that I really wish I could get in touch with. I really wish I remember his last name. Um, but he was there. And that was the neighborhood. Um, so I stayed there until the age of 16 when um, my mom finally um, had the last straw of what was going on with me. Um, now, okay, for a little premise, I had been asking my mom 
to allow me to to live with my father. Um, me and my mom, we had a decent relationship. Me and my father, we had a decent relationship, but you know, I really wanted to know what it was like to live with him and to to just have a different living situation. Um, so my mom, I guess, didn't understand, which I get it. What 14 year old really knows what he wants out of life. Um, I didn't, but I knew where I needed to, to be for a minute, just for me. Um, so she caught me drinking not going to say where I was drinking at because, you know, <laughs> but she caught me drinking with a friend and that was the last straw at 16. Um, I moved to stay with my dad and from there, I joined the military at 17 and it was off to the races. Um, then, you know, I bounced around a little bit and I landed in Atlanta. Yay. So that's kind of a general synopsis or general outline of my life, um, up until the present day. Um, we'll go back in and fill in some points and as some of my memories come back to me and well, let you know more about me and let you know some of my experiences. Some of them may be funny. Some of them may just be me telling records of my life so that I can get memories out of my head so that I don't just forget, you know. So thank you. I um, hope you enjoy. And we'll talk to you later.